Well, I was trained actually as a geomorphologist at University College London, part of London University. And when I came to Victoria, I became interested in the applied side of geomorphology, which was looking at things like floods and earthquakes and so on. In fact, uh, together with a, a student of mine, we produced the world's first model of an earthquake destroying a city. So I was very interested in, in the more physical types of disasters. Well, of course, the AIDS pandemic is just a very, very large disaster. And you can apply the same sorts of models and strategies to dealing with the AIDS pandemic that you can apply to other types of disasters. So there's a great overlap there. My name is Gerson Mungerere. I come from Venda. November, I began here sick. To exin ekteni crack ni asele luo poiso di Venda asele vai di Venda le trek me ekse yo shem ek tuot no. When my sister-in-law got in touch with me and said, you know, that we have this dilemma with our painter and Gertson, and he was very healthy and he's always been very committed to his job, works really hard, he can't, he just can't keep going. So I said to her, well, look, I'm prepared just within our own group for our own employees. I will go and speak to Dr. Foster about it. I'll do a bit of research on it. I'll get some of his muti, as you call it. And if Gertson is satisfied and happy to do it, we will we'll give him, we'll start him. To a mesli, a lob, be the Canada. Yes, yes, a steer here a pele, and the the pampi. I want you every day to record. I took it, I took two, I took three, I took four, I took one, I was sick. I couldn't take any. Even if on a day when you miss, don't worry, just say sick, and I'll know that you weren't able to manage that day. Right, and as a fat, I'm the scrape, writing. As a two fat, writing. So then Gerson went home, started the supplements, and we heard within, I think probably within 10 days, we heard that he was feeling much better. So, three dogs to four dogs, it's fully all right. It's a how. And he wanted to let us know that he was coming back to work, and we said, the men at the shopping center said no. No, he will, he'll, he'll never come back to work. Well, he didn't come back to work on January the 8th, or, or the day when they all came back, but he did come back to work part days starting about the 20th of January, and you see what you saw. So one of the things that actually was um, a bit of an anomaly for Harry Foster was to say, as he's looking at his geographical distribution of selenium in Africa, and he's looking at the demographic distribution of HIV AIDS and other diseases in Africa, and he looked at Senegal and he saw that Senegal, despite the fact that men in Senegal have multiple partners and have multiple wives, and he's saying to himself, Senegal's capital is one of the largest commercial sex centers of Africa with prostitutes visiting it from all over Western Africa and the Middle East. Then why is it that for all of this, the rate of HIV AIDS in Senegal is very much lower than it is in the rest of Africa? Working through his stats, he's moving from this much lower level in Senegal with seemingly the social, the sexual practices being somewhat the same, but he's moving and he's seeing that the, the incidence demographically of 
HIV in the rest of Africa is enormously larger. So what is different? So he goes back and he finds in his research that Senegal has a huge amount of selenium in the soil, probably more than any country in the world except Bolivia. HIV encodes for an enzyme called glutathione peroxidase. What that means is it has a, in its genetic code, it has a gene that allows it to make an analog of that particular enzyme. That enzyme plays a crucial role in the human immune system. So what happens uh, when somebody is infected and HIV keeps replicating, it removes the nutrients from the human body that are required to make the enzyme that is very protective against HIV. So it's a wonderful evolutionary gimmick on the part of the virus. So what we see then in AIDS is the removal of the four key nutrients that are at the core of that enzyme. They are selenium, glutamine, tryptophan, and cysteine. So what happens when somebody is selenium deficient? Well, if they're very selenium deficient, their immune system collapses because we know selenium is essential for, I think, at least 18 different functions in the human immune system, including, of course, the production of T lymphocytes. In 1535, I think it was, Jacques Cartier was exploring the St. Lawrence. His boat and crew got trapped in the ice, and they had to winter on land. They were dying in large numbers of scurvy when a First Nations a uh, warrior, I suppose you, you would call him, came up and said, why are you dying like that? All you have to do is to scrape the bark off that, the white fur, boil it, and drink the water. Having absolutely nothing to lose, except this, the crew dying from scary, they did that, and they all recovered. When Jacques Cartier went back to Europe and told the doctors, they said, we're not interested in the views of ignorant savages. It's rubbish. We know that scurvy is caused by the dirty vapors coming up from the bowels of the ship. In the time between Jacques Cartier being told how to cure scurvy by First Nations people and the British Navy adopting limes as a treatment for scurvy, millions of sailors died agonizing death all unnecessarily. That is what's happening now. Millions and millions of people are dying unnecessarily for aid. Nobody needs to die from it. But of course, I am today's ignorant savage. A geographer cannot work out what causes AIDS and how to reverse it. When biochemists, virologists and so on have spent 25 years and untold billions of dollars trying to find the same solution. So they will not listen to ignorant savages any more than the doctors would listen to ignorant savages when Jacques Cartier came back with the answer to scurvy. There is a big difference, of course, between scurvy and HIV AIDS. Scurvy, thank goodness, was not infectious. HIV AIDS is infectious, and it's spreading like wildfire. So we cannot put up with objections that are based on status, based on money, etc. We don't have that luxury.